Hi everyone and welcome to week 18 and the final week of our Sweet Childhood Memory Sew Along hosted by Pat Sloan at her website ilovetomakequilts.com. This week's theme is something you've learned. Hopefully along the way throughout these tutorials you've learned something from me. Anyway, if you haven't already done so, jump over to Pat's website, download this week's free pattern, come back here and I'll show you how to do it. Again, no changes to the cutting directions this week, so I'm just pointing out that I have the large and small light, the three sizes of medium squares, my dark ones, and the little ones for in the center. So we're gonna start by taking the largest of our medium and our background squares and making some half square triangles. So to make the half square triangles, we're going to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner in one direction only on our background fabric. We're then just going to pair this together with our other medium fabric right sides together, take it to the sewing machine and stitch a quarter of an inch on each side of our drawn line. Let's sew. With those now sewn, we take them over and clip them apart and I like to give them a quick press first to set my stitching before slicing them in half on our drawn line and then pressing them towards the darker of the two fabrics. We'll then need to trim these down to the required size and I'll meet you back at that point. My preferred method of trimming my half square triangles is to do them two at a time by nesting that seam nice and snug. I then use my six and a half inch square ruler and I place the diagonal line from this ruler on my stitching line. I then make sure that I have enough fabric outside my required trim down measurement before trimming the first two sides. We then rotate the block making sure that that seam stays nested and then we can line up our required trim down size which in this case is three and a half inches on our freshly two cut sides and we also need to ensure that we still have our diagonal line on our stitching line to keep this square. We then trim the last two sides and we have perfect half square triangles. We now need to do a couple of sew and flip corners on our dark rectangles and I'm going to do this the traditional method and I'm also going to show you using the folded corner clipper which is my preferred method. So to do the traditional method we'll take the small background square and draw a diagonal line in one direction only from corner to corner. We'll then place this on our large dark rectangle making sure that we have the correct orientation from the pattern and we line up all of the edges nice and square to make sure that our piece is in the right place. I then like to pin this before taking it to the sewing machine. At the sewing machine I am going to sew just to the right of my drawn line rather than on the drawn line and what this does is it allows for the extra fabric that's taken up when we fold the piece over by the thread that we stitch in there. After we've taken that from the stitching we check that we've maintained squareness on our piece by folding it over and double checking that all of our edges line up. If they're off just the tiniest bit don't stress too much about it because everything will be fine in the end. If you want to though, you can trim it back square with the piece underneath and then everything will be a-okay going forward. Once we've checked that it's square, we'll press that into position and then we trim away our back two layers. We'll repeat, repeat this, sorry, with a medium color square on the other side, once again, making sure that we maintain the correct orientation as per the pattern.
As you can see, the traditional method is quite simple. Um, the most important thing is to make sure that you maintain the correct orientations as listed in the pattern. Now I'm going to show you how I do it using the folded corner clipper. And we begin by doing the same thing, except we don't draw the line this time. We just line up all of our edges and make sure that we have that squareness. Then we place the folded corner clipper tool on our square at the measurement listed, which is three and a half inches, and make sure that we have the edge lined up and the bottom there and the other corner. We then trim away the excess before we sew in this instance and take it to our machine and sew our quarter of an inch as normal. I do bump my needle over by just one position on this one and that sort of maintains the same thing as sewing just to the outside of the drawn line. We'll do this on the remaining three, including putting the other medium square on the other side. With the last of our sew and flip now done, we just need to press all of these out towards that medium fabric. And we have one more little section to make before we can continue to making our quadrants. So the next thing that we have to do is just lay this out as per the pattern to make sure that we have everything in the right direction. We'll put the sew and flip units on the bottom here with our medium fabric pointing up to the right hand side. We'll then place our half square triangles with our medium fabric pointing down towards our sew and flip unit. And then we have four more little background squares here that we place in the top left hand corner. We first need to sew this unit together with our background and the half square triangle and we'll press that towards the background fabric. From there, we'll do our horizontal seam onto our sew and flip unit and we'll press that one up towards our half square triangle unit. With those quadrants made, we now need to add two sew and flips to these. And we'll start by putting our medium fabric on our background square in that corner there. So we'll do this the same as we did our large rectangle sew and flips. And I'm going to use the folded corner clipper for this. So once again, I place the little square in the required position. I then use the folded corner clipper to trim away that excess fabric first before sewing our quarter of an inch seam. We also need to do this on the opposing corner in the middle, but I'll meet you back when we get to that point. As I said before, we now need to place our 
last remaining squares on the opposite side of this and do another sew and flip for the center of our block. There will be special pressing directions for this one and I'll get to that when we get there. So for now though, we'll just use our folded corner clipper tool and line this up perfectly, slice the piece off, take it to our machine and stitch our quarter of an inch. I just thought I'd let you know here that if you do not have a folded corner clipper tool, you can actually do the same method using a standard quilting ruler. You first need to line up all your edges just the same and then find your quarter of an inch mark and place that on each corner of your smaller square there. And you'll see that that does the diagonal across. This gives you the quarter of an inch for when you trim that off and take it to your machine. And so hopefully that helps you if you don't have a folded corner clipper. Now that we have those sewn flips on our quadrants, we need to press these. Now, with the medium fabric, you can just press that out away from the block and towards the corner. Before our middle sewn flips, which in my instance is the lighter of the two fabrics, we're going to press two of them in one direction and the other two in the opposite direction. And this will allow us to nest those when we go to sew our final four patch together. So once again, for the medium fabric, just press that out towards the corner of the block. But for our little ones in the middle of the block, we are going to press two of them away from the block and two of them in towards the block to allow for nesting when we get to the four patch part of our construction today. It's time now to lay our block out for final construction. And as I've said a few times now, this will be finalized as a four patch. What you're seeing me do there is putting my opposed pressing sections opposite each other so that when I do the vertical seams, I'll have those nest in the middle. And then when I do the horizontal seam, they will also nest the whole way across. I'll do that now and I'll meet you back. With our vertical seams now sewn, we just have to do our final horizontal seam and you'll find as we go across here that everything lines up and nests nice and snugly. But before we can get to pinning that together and sewing our horizontal seams, we're just going to press these two seams open and this will help us reduce the bulk along the seam and also in the center of the block with all of those small sewn flips. Once that's done, go ahead, pin them together, and then we'll get to sew that last horizontal seam and our block for this week will be done.
Just switching over to my large pressing mat now which needs a change of cover and we'll press this final seam open. That's a wrap folks on the Sweet Childhood Memories Sew Along. I really hope you've enjoyed along the way and you'll see over here now I've popped a picture of my completed quilt. It has been quilted and bound, ready to move on to the next one. That will be in the next few weeks I believe. I uh, will put a post in my community tab when I know more. For now though, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again real soon.